Tomorrow on Capitol Hill, Congress is digging into the Maui fires. Top officials from HECO, the Public Utilities Commission, and the State Energy Office will be questioned on whether electric infrastructure played a part in the tragedy. Gina Mangieri is covering the hearing and joins us now from Washington, D.C. Gina? Nice to see you and speak with you, Bridget. It's been such a busy day here at the Capitol. It's all a buzz for the folks from here because of the impending shutdown. That's just days away if Congress can't agree on a funding mechanism. But for people from Hawaii, the buzz is more about the investigative hearing that's coming up tomorrow morning. Now, here's a preview of what's going to happen. I wanted to know what the House committee investigating Maui hopes will come of this, so I went right to one of its co-chairmen to find out. I'm going to ask about uh, de-energizing the lines, which means turning off the power, uh, why that wasn't done uh, sooner, why it wasn't maintained until the threat was gone. When you have uh, a clear threat, the National Weather Service was telling you a couple days in advance that there was a significant threat to the area, why aren't you taking the actions necessary. Always Investigating talked one-on-one -on -one with HECO's spokesperson about how its president and CEO, Shelley Kimura, has prepared to be on the hot seat. No, I, I think people, I really want to make sure there's, there's not going to be a big reveal by Shelley tomorrow. So I don't know that anyone's going to be hearing new information about August 8th, but I'm sure there will be additional details about what we're working on and uh, potentially what could, you know, what could be looked at in the future in terms of some of these, uh, um, you know, extreme weather um, situations and, and how we're addressing those. So far, HECO has acknowledged its downed power lines appear to have caused a morning blaze, but the cause of the deadly afternoon flare-up has not been determined. The head of HECO's worker union is at the Capitol to monitor the hearing, too. This as the power company is battered by mounting lawsuits and facing a long and costly rebuild. Remember the people, the people behind the company, right? So people's lives are impacted. And I mean, Maui, of course, the, the people that went through it, but also the aftermath in, in how it affects jobs and how it affects our future. I wanted to know what are the potential ramifications of a congressional investigation, especially with billions in federal recovery funding needed in parallel with accountability. I view these on separate tracks. There appears to continue to be bipartisan support for disaster aid for Maui, figuring out what happened um, and what different institutions in Hawaii uh, can do to make sure it never happens again and if there needs to be accountability uh, is an important step forward. All this comes as a government shutdown looms at week's end with the House unable to resolve spending bills. Meanwhile, a bipartisan Senate continuing resolution is advancing but is still at the mercy of holdout House Republicans. There are too many of them right now who want a government shutdown and all the pain that that will cause. As for the other officials set to testify at tomorrow's hearing, here's a preview of excerpts from their opening statements before the panel launches into questions. Mark Glick, the state's chief energy officer, says his office expects that the results of investigations will be helpful in informing additional measures and recommendations for limiting future wildfires and their ill effects. And the chair of the Public Utilities Commission says we are working with the utilities to take immediate actions on changes to protocols, on red flag warning days, and whether power lines should be built below ground. After HECO, the PUC, and the Energy Office testimony, both of Hawaii's House members will also face the panel to give their perspectives. Here's what each told me ahead of their appearances tomorrow. I hope it's just le legitimate questions and assurance that federal programs are, are being carried out as they should be carried out. Uh, that's a legitimate thing for us to ask for. Uh, you know, clearly, um, if my colleagues want to really help uh, the people of uh, West Maui right now, the mess, best thing for them to do is to uh, keep our government open. Um, and so again, I think it really is about emphasizing to our colleagues here just the scale magnitude of what happened here, uh, not just in terms of numbers, not just in terms of any technical responses or regulations, uh, but really the human impact that this has had on our community. 
now. This will all start tomorrow morning, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's 4 a.m. Hawaii time for your early birds. We'll be carrying it all morning long uh, with updates and details on Wake Up Today. It's expected to take about two to three hours, so it'll carry quite a bit through the morning Hawaii time. It is significant. This is not just an informational briefing. This is sworn testimony. Uh, so what comes out of this is very important uh, and should lead to, to a, a lot of a, possibly some new information, maybe not from the investigative standpoint so much, but from, again, prevention going forward, how to make sure this never happens again in Hawaii or indeed across the nation. We'll have it all tomorrow. Reporting live from Washington, D.C., Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. And Bridget, back to you. Going to be an interesting one. Thanks so much, Gina.